Hello folks, welcome back and welcome to a video about my PM skincare routine. I've been going over a lot of general information about various steps of the skincare routine, um, including a full, very simple three-step skincare routine. I will pop a little card about that up here and I will try to remember to do a link to it down below. I've also talked about, um, I did an ordinary haul just recently, talked about a couple toners I've been using, and I wanted to go ahead and talk about my PM skincare routine so you can see how I incorporate a lot of these products into a routine for me. And just as a little bit of foundational information, I am 48 years old, so I am definitely seeing signs of aging, including loss of firmness and of course lines and some uh, sagging and some of that uh, texture, weird texture and stuff like that. And I also have a mild case of rosacea and I have oily skin. So I have several different things that I'm dealing with. And I want to use products instead of using procedures. For one, I can't afford procedures, um, especially right now because my uh, job situation is changing and I'm not gonna be pulling in a salary for a while. Not quite sure how long that's going to be, but I will talk about that in some future videos when I talk about some of the changes and some of the things that I want to kind of put out there. But anyways, so yes, I'm trying to use products to address my issues. I'm trying not to use procedures. I don't have the money for Botox. I don't have the money to go to an esthetician or somebody like that and have stuff, you know, shot into my skin or have microneedling and stuff like that. Um, I have no problem with those things, but I also want to come to accept the fact that I'm aging. And using these products, while they can help address some of the issues that I have, I know they're not going to totally get rid of them. You can't, you know, creams and potions and things like that are not going to totally get rid of the stuff that is making your skin age. It's not going to get rid of wrinkles. It's not going to totally unsag your skin and like stretch it up the way a facelift does. Basically only a facelift is going to do a lot of that stuff and a lot of these procedures. So again, I have nothing against that. I just don't personally have the money and I would kind of like to accept the way my skin looks, the fact that it doesn't look like it's 20 year old skin anymore and be okay with that. And one of the ways I'm doing that is with my skincare routines. I do have a very separate one for AM and PM use. My PM one is definitely more um, extensive. I have more products. I use products that I would not use during the day simply because they are too heavy or a little too sticky or their texture just wouldn't work during the day. But they work for me at night. I don't mind going to bed with, you know, uh, you know, a little more sticky product or an oily product or something like that. So how I'm trying to address my skin issues is with products. And I'm going to take you step by step through my skincare routine. And I'm going to take you through the skincare routine, my evening skincare routine that I use when I am wearing a full face of makeup, including waterproof mascara. I have lashes that unfortunately just don't stay curled. So I like to use waterproof mascara to keep them curled. And waterproof mascara is notoriously difficult to get off. So to that end, when I am wearing it, I like to use this coconut oil. This is not the package that the coconut oil came in. This is a package I've repurposed. What I do is I just get a, just a basic kind of coconut oil. You can find all sorts of different ones. You can find ones that have been processed so they don't smell like coconut anymore. You can find ones that are, you can find organic, you can find all sorts of, of wonderful things. But for the most part, it's pretty inexpensive. And I like to use just, I take a little bit of it and I warm it up in my hands and then I spread it on my face, uh, get it all around my lash line, all over there. And I find that it really does a great job of melting the makeup off. I apologize if you can hear the heat come on. And it does a fantastic job of melting the makeup off. It is not appropriate for everybody. I know some people, I think some people do find it comedogenic, so it will clog their pores or they have a reaction to it. So obviously if that happens to you, don't use this. There are all sorts of commercially available makeup removers. There are makeup removers for waterproof um, makeup, things like that. I just like this because it's simple, it's natural, it's one ingredient, it's very inexpensive, and it works really well for me. 
And I do address the, especially the problem with oil getting in your eyes a little bit later, and I'll tell you how I do that. So once I get this on my face and I have melted the makeup off to the point where I'm really ready to take it off, what I will typically do, I will take a micellar water, and I'm currently using the Pacifica Gem water. I've used several different Pacifica ones. I actually think I'm gonna be going back to the coconut water one. I like that one a lot. Um, and I will use, I will typically soak a cotton pad and we'll just use that to wipe off all of the, as much of the oil as I can and the makeup and all of that. This is not enough for cleansing, but for me, it's a great intermediate step for getting the gunk off. And then to actually cleanse, what I use in the evening is the Trader Joe's Nourish Face Cleanser. And I'm gonna pop a picture of it up here because I just didn't feel like getting up and getting it out of my bathroom. So I'm being a little bit lazy. But I have talked about that one in multiple videos because it is such a great basic cleanser. Very simple, very plain, it's fragrance free. It is very inexpensive as well. You can get it at Trader Joe's and all of the Trader Joe's skincare is cruelty free. And that is something that I, I prefer to buy from companies that are cruelty free. So I really like that one. It's a nice basic cleanser. It's a little too much for me in the morning, but for me at night, it's great because not only is my skin oily, but I'm also using an oil to get makeup off. So I really wanna do a good cleansing on my face and to actually cleanse my face as far as the method of cleansing. I like to use baby washcloths. Um, I know some people use just regular washcloths. I find that I really like baby washcloths because they feel a little bit gentler. Um, and they are they're nice and small um, I've gotten them at the um, Death Star otherwise known as Walmart I've also gotten and these are some of my favorite they came from Target but I bought them years ago so I don't know if they still have this um, I think it was called Circo or Circa was the brand of course you can find baby washcloths everywhere I know Gerber makes them and you can buy multi-packs of them so they're very inexpensive they're nice and soft nice and gentle and they do a great job of doing a physical exfoliation on my skin. And I will tell you that I do think of my skin as being so much sturdy as far as its texture. It's, um, it's oily, so it is a little bit thicker than somebody who maybe has drier skin. So I find that my skin doesn't get terribly irritated very easily. So this doesn't bother my skin. It may be too much for you, especially because I also use some chemical exfoliants later on in my skincare routine. So I haven't found that the combination of the two is a problem, but of course you don't have to use something like this if it's a little too much. But this is how I like to actually cleanse my face. I put, I wet this, get a little bit of the cleanser on it, and then like really uh, get, especially get around the eye area because I really want to get out. If I've been wearing mascara and or eyeliner, I really want to get that out of the lash line and make sure I'm really cleaning that so I don't end up with any issues. And I want to try and get as much of that oil out of there as possible as well. So once I have done that and I've, I've so I've taken, so I've melted the makeup off, used the micellar water to wipe off that first layer and then actually cleansed my face. The next step is I take the Centella, the Causerex Centella Water Alcohol-Free Toner, and I spoke about this in a toner video that I will again try to remember to link in the card up here and also down below. I'm using two of the Causerex toners. I'm using one in the morning and one in the evening, and this is the one I'm using in the evening. And the reason I'm using the Centella Water one is because Centella, which is also known as Sika, you'll find some products called it Sika, C-I-C-A, among other things, Centella Asiatica is known for addressing inflammation. And I mentioned that I have rosacea. It's a fairly mild case, but rosacea is inflammation. And my face, the center of my face, my nose and then my cheek area does get somewhat red and inflamed. So I want to address that. And this is one of the products that I use to address that. So I spray several, several uh, shots of that all over my face. And then I take my hands and just kind of press into the skin. And then I proceed to my chemical exfoliants. And this is where I've made a recent change. So what I had previously been doing was using a BHA product on the center of my face and an AHA on the outer perimeter. And for my BHAs, I was alternating. I was using the Polish Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA gel five times a week. And then twice a week, I was using the Resist 
weekly retexturizing foaming treatment, which is 4% BHA. The reason I'm using the BHA on the center is for several different reasons. BHA is oil sol soluble. So it is really great for people with oily skin. It also not only works as a surface exfoliant, but it's a an exfoliant that goes into the skin. So if you have blackheads, BHA is really good because it will help to clean out the gunk that is in those pores, the, the gunk that's causing the blackheads. Also, BHA is known for skin calming properties. BHA is also known as salicylic acid and salicylates are what make up aspirin. So if you've ever taken aspirin, you know that aspirin is addressing inflammation, the pain that comes from inflammation. And so BHA is known for addressing inflammation and irritation, like the redness from rosacea. So that is why I, was, I have been using BHA on the center of my face. And then for an AHA product, what I have been using is the Alpha Skin Care Intensive Renewal Serum, which is 14% glycolic acid. So this stuff um, is pretty serious. If you have not used an AHA or a glycolic acid before, I would definitely recommend that you don't start with something this strong. Again, my skin is pretty sturdy and I'm using it on the outer perimeter of my face. AHAs are water soluble. So they are purely for surface exfoliation. They are not going to do uh, the the deep inside the skin exfoliation of BHAs and they're water soluble. So they're great for surface exfoliation. And the reason I started using this was because I noticed, especially in my chin, I was getting a lot of texture. Oh, I was getting like um, this, maybe it was milia, you know, those little white bumps. My skin was just feeling kind of rough and looking kind of rough. And so I was looking for something that could address that and I decided to try a glycolic acid treatment. And AHAs can be glycolic acids and lactic or lactic acids, either one, but I decided to go with that glycolic and I've really liked this. Again, it's very affordable. There are multiple AHA products out there, but this one is a very affordable option and I really like using it. However, what I've decided to try doing is alternating these products with a couple of new products that I'm trying out. And actually, one of them isn't totally new. It is the Ordinary Azelaic Acid. And what I had been doing was I would put the BHA on the center of my face, and then I would put the Azelaic Acid on top of that because Azelaic Acid is also known for addressing redness and inflammation. But I started to wonder if maybe I was doing too much putting one acid on top of another. Now you can combine some acid products with caution, um, but I decided to try something a little bit different because I also wanted to incorporate another product. And that is also from The Ordinary and it's the Ordinary Ethylated Ascorbic Acid 15% Solution, which is a vitamin C product. And I am using this partially to try to address my forehead lines. And I mentioned this in a previous video that um, I had heard that ethylated ascorbic acid could play a good role in helping to address those forehead lines. And I do have some pretty, pretty um, intense forehead lines. So I thought I would give this a try. But again, I didn't want to use this on top of an AHA product just to be cautious. So what I've decided to do, and I've just started this in the last week, was I am using the vitamin C and the azelaic acid on three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, just because that's easy for me to remember. So I'm using the azelaic acid on the inside portion where I would typically put the BHA. I'm using the vitamin C on the um, perimeter of my face where I had typically been putting the AHA. And we're gonna see how that works. Um, I don't know, it's only been a week. It typically can take sometimes up to several months to see how a product works. So far I haven't, I've been using the azelaic acid for a while and I've not had any issues. I've been using the vitamin C, as I said, for about a week and haven't noticed any um, negative effects. It hasn't gotten rid of my forehead lines, but I don't think it's going to actually get rid of them, but I'm hoping that it can perhaps soften them somewhat. We'll see. But a vitamin C is also known to be a great acid for, um, for helping with skin cell turnover and things like that. So we're trying that. So I'm still using the AHAs and BHAs, but I'm holding those to five days a week. No, four days. Math is not my strong suit, I'm a theater person, okay? So four days a week for the AHA, BHA stuff, and then three days a week for the vitamin C and azelaic acid. And again, this is kind of new. And when I get to the end of the exfoliant acid section of my skincare, I take a little break and I address my teeth. I brush and floss my teeth. I'm not gonna go into that, it's pretty basic. I use floss and I use toothpaste and a toothbrush. 
but I like to give my skin a little bit of a rest and let those products kind of start to sink in. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can go from one product to the other. There used to be a thought that you needed to take time in between. For the most part, uh, most experts say you don't need to worry about that. So I just like to take a little break and that's a good place for me to do my teeth. And after I do that, then I go back and I start in with my serums. And this is a place where I've also made a couple of changes. I am trying a new to me serum. It's the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum. I mentioned this in my serum video. I'm trying this partially because it has a lot of great products in it, a lot of great ingredients, including niacinamide, and um, peptides and hyaluronic acid. So it's a great all around serum. That ni niacinamide is known for, again, addressing redness and inflammation among other things. It's also mentioned as being really good for any, any of you who might have problems with acne where you have redness and irritation from the acne, niacinamide is known for being really good for that. So I've been using this and I put this up about two and a half pumps of this in, this in the palm of my hand. And then I add the Ordinary's Niacinamide 10% plus Sink 1% just for an extra boost of niacinamide. Again, I've only been using, I've been using the serum for several weeks now. And so far I've been very pleased with it. And then the niacinamide I've been using for a week, maybe two, I can't remember exactly how long, but I wanted that extra, extra um, hit of niacinamide to see how that affects the redness um, on the on my face and see whatever other effects it might have. I have not had any negative effects from either of these so so far I've been really pleased. Um, the Peach and Lily is a little bit expensive if you're looking for something that's really inexpensive this probably isn't going to be for you. It's typically about $39 at Ulta um, but it does come in a slightly larger package. It's like 1.3, yeah, it's 1.35 ounces. Typically these are one ounce, so you get a little bit more. And then the niacinamide, because it's the ordinary, it was very inexpensive. I'm pretty sure this was less than $10, and I think it is a standard one ounce bottle um, here. I just can't, I just can't see it, but I'm pretty sure it's a one ounce bottle. But anyways, these are fairly new. So far I've been really liking them. So I put those, I combine those in the palm of my hand, and again, I kind of press and sort of move it all over my face. I really try to get it around my eye area to help to address those fine lines and all that stuff. And then I put it underneath my chin area, down my neck, and into my decollete, whatever's left, just to really get, because you also want to address this area as well. We tend to forget this area, and it needs some help too. All right, so that is the serum step. And then I have a couple more products that I put on top. Um, yes, I am a little bit extra with my skincare, but the next thing that I put on is also from Causerex, and it is the Advanced Nail 96 Mousse and Power Essence. This is by Causerex, the same company that makes the toner that I'm currently using. And Snail Mucin is basically, as gross as this sounds, it's basically kind of like snail snot. It's sticky um, and what it does is it helps to increase the moisture in your skin. It has some other benefits as well, and I may go into that in a dedicated video where I talk a little bit more about what this product does. It's from the Korean skincare routine. They use this a lot. Uh, Causerex is a Korean skincare brand. So I wanted to try it. I wanted to give it a try. And so far I've been pleased. I, um, I have not had any irritation or any negative effects from it, um, but I do really like it. So I put it on top of my serums, and then on top of that, I put rosehip seed oil. And I use this, and I've been using rosehip seed oil for years, and where I put it, I put it in a very targeted, three very targeted areas. My nose area, and then each cheek, because it also is known for addressing redness and inflammation. You'll notice there's a theme here. I am all about trying to address that redness and inflammation. And I like to um, use products that are maybe a little more on the natural side. And this rosehip seed oil is, first of all, it's very inexpensive. The brand I'm currently using is Now Solutions. Less than $10. Pretty sure this was less than $10. It lasts for a good long time, and it is just the one ingredient. It doesn't have anything else in it. It's just the rosehip seed oil. So I've really been liking it a lot. And I just use it in those areas. I'm not putting it all over my face. And I only use all of these products I only use at night because they would be a little too much for me during the day. But I don't mind putting multiple products and also putting products that 
have a texture that I wouldn't like during the day, I don't mind using those at night because I'm just going to bed, so it's not a big deal. And finally, last but not least, I use, a, once again, from CauseRx, the Honey Ceramide Eye Cream. And I know there are thoughts about eye creams. Um, there are people who say you really don't need them, and that's probably true. But I was making an order from Hope Look. They had CauseRx on several months ago, and I was buying several other products. So I decided to go ahead and give this a try. I figured my eyes, you know, giving them a little extra attention is probably not a bad idea because of the aging that I'm experiencing. And so I figured this is actually a pretty healthy amount. It's 1.05 ounces and I don't use very much. I, again, I only use this at night, so it doesn't take very much. And I just pat it all around the eye area, really getting in, paying attention to this area, this outer area, which is where I see a lot of that aging and the fine lines and all that fun stuff. So and this is something I just use at night around the eye area. So far, I've been really pleased with it. Ceramides are a wonderful ingredient for the skin, and they do help to address a lot of some of those signs of aging that I'm looking to address. And that is my PM skincare routine. I know that is a lot of products. You may not need or want to use all those products. But as I tried to explain, all of them are being used for a particular purpose and a particular reason. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I am trying to address the issues with my skin with products and not with procedures, just because I can't afford procedures. And I think it's a good idea for me personally to try to come to an acceptance and I know I talked about this at the beginning, but come to an acceptance of the aging process and accept that my skin looks different. I've had to make some changes to this routine and I will probably continue to make changes to this routine as I move along in years, as I get into my 50s and then hopefully get beyond that into my 60s and hopefully beyond that. My skin is going to continue to change and I'm going to probably need to continue to refine this routine and maybe use different products or change out some products or maybe I'll find that some products won't work for me anymore or just simply aren't necessary. It's just going to, you know, it's something that you just have to kind of figure out as you go along. So I hope that was helpful for any of you who are, especially those of you who are in middle age and you're trying to address some of these issues that are coming up where you are dealing with sagging, loss of firmness, um, the aging process with fine lines, wrinkles, the texture issues, all those really fun, enjoyable things that happen as we get older. They're not enjoyable at all. I really am not enjoying, you know, I don't mind getting older. It's, I think it's how people react to us getting older that bothers me more than the actual act of getting older itself. I think that's really what it is, but that's a very philosophical thing and I can go into that in another video. Thank you so much for being here. I know there is a lot of material out there on YouTube, so I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this little video. And I would love it if you would like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and come back and see my next video. There's one more thing that I want to do. I want to do a throwback track. I have not thought about that at all, so I will pop something down below. I'm trying to go back to, uh, in some cases, my childhood or early teen years or whatever, but I will figure something out and put it down in the, de the description box below and put a link to it. Um, but yes, thank you very much for being here and I will hope to see you in my next video. Have a great day.